Right, hey folks. So today the topic is why you most likely will fail and why you're never going to gain. So uh, firstly, thanks for making it onto my channel. If you have any questions or comments, pop them down below. And if you'd like to work with me on your own strength and physique goals, there's a link in the description. So I was at the gym today and um, I'm not much of a talker when I'm at the gym, but what I do like to do is I like to people watch um, in between sets. So um, in between sets, put the bar down and I just I watch people, you know, just to see what's going on. And so I made some observations, which I thought would make for a decent video. So I've shared them with you today. First one is, first reason for why you'll never gain. You don't microload. One of the things that struck me was, I don't really see anyone adding the 1.25 kilos or less than that to the bar at all, ever, you know? In fact, in some gyms, they don't even have 1.25 kilo plates. So you can't up the weight by two and a half kilos or five pounds. So there's nothing inherently magic with microloading, right? Like, you know, there's no magic in the small plates. Um, but the thing is, it betrays a bias against two things. One, against hard work. Like you'll take the gains when they're easy, but when they get hard, you're not willing to dig in. And it betrays a bias against progression. It's more the like it's more the kind of training where it's like, okay, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna get through my workout, I've got a list of sets and reps, I'm gonna get through them. Coach told me to do this, I read about this, my CrossFit box told me to do this. It's all very boring, it's all very samey. And let's face it, we don't live very savage lives, right? Do we? You know, I'm sat here in front of a computer, in front of a camera, sat down on a nice plush leather chair, talking to you guys. Okay. So it's not a very savage lifestyle. You may work in an office, you know, you may see the same people every day. The boss you've got to be nice to, coworkers you've got to get along with, you know, it's all very samey. It's not a very savage lifestyle. So actually whipping out of that zone and getting into it for um, training, it's not something which comes naturally to a lot of people. And it's a little bit easier when you're younger, because when you're younger, you've got all those hormones running around your, your body. You've got all that sort of like inherent kind of insecurity, which drives your anger and insecurity, you know, does that. But when you're older, you know, 25, 30, you've settled down. Like, oh, actually, do I really want to get all savage for an hour in the gym? Not really. <laughs> so it all becomes a bit tiring. And I think there develops this laissez-faire attitude towards training, just like there is with everything else in life. Because in everything else in life, that kind of attitude doesn't really get you anywhere. Like if you run into your office and you're an accountant <laughs> on a Monday morning and you're just like, ah, <laughs> full of pre-workout, that's probably not going to go very well, um, you know, for your career or, or, or for that day. So our lives are set up to be very calm and still. And then we have to go to the gym and be savage. And it's a different, we have to tap into a certain mentality there. And I can kind of intellectualize that to you on, you know, on video, but you actually have to live it. And I guess that's one of the reasons why training videos are so popular because you see your favorite YouTubers actually training hard, you know. So perhaps I'll do more. But anyway, first one is you don't microload. Next, you don't really strain. This is another thing I saw as I was walking around. Hardly anyone slows the reps down, right? Like hardly anyone gets to the point in a set where they're grinding. I don't see that. I just see a lot of people doing like stuff, a lot of quarter squats, a lot of quarter leg presses. I was doing squats today. Um, I was in the leg room. So, you know, there's a lot of that, a lot of partial bench presses, a lot of show and tell a lot of grimace sometimes you get a couple of young guys in who are really like feeling themselves and they're shouting at each other they're grimacing they but what tends to happen is they grimace they shout they scream and then they rack the bar nothing actually fails nothing actually slows down and again i don't want to get into that whole you know mcdonald israel argument about uh, whether you should slow your reps down or not i don't care about that all i'm saying is you don't have to do that but all i'm saying is people typically don't now do I? Do my reps sometimes slow down? Sure. Sometimes they don't. I mean, you guys saw me train in uh, my video that I made a few weeks ago. I slowed down on every rep. Every rep was every every set was a strain. Now, that's just a consequence of working hard. It's a consequence of chasing progression. It's not, you know, it's not something I aim for necessarily. It's just because I I've, I want to get the most amount of reps. So I want to get my win for the day. Um, but anyway, nothing inherently magic in the straining. But what I'm saying is. It's another clue, right? The next one. You're not strong with the barbell. Now, this is a controversial one because, I mean, I've said this in the past. I've said you don't have to use the barbell and you don't, okay? You don't. You don't have to use the barbell. 
No one has to barbell squat. No one has to barbell bench. A lot of guys online, like uh, Paul Carter, are really into this. It's like, barbell sucks. Like, yeah, okay, cool. You know, <laughs> barbell sucks. I'll go with that. Um, I'm not saying they're necessary. What I'm saying is they are universal, right? Like, I'll give you an example. There is a row machine in my old gym. And what people would do with that row is rather than sit in the row machine, which, you know, hammer strength, and I think hammer strength kind of know what they're doing, you know, make, in terms of making equipment, what hammer strength intended, what they do is they stand away from the row and they, they hold the seat and they stand away from it. And then that lets them lift more weight. And they're like, you know what? I'm making a machine work for me. It's like, look, dickhead, the, the machine was made by experts. You, you know, Jack from who works at Tesco with two GSSEs, you're not making it better for you by doing that. All right, just settle down. So <laughs> I just think it's a way that people use to add more weight to the machine. That's all they do, you know. So if you're not, if you're very, very strong in a range of exercises, and then I put you on a barbell and you're weak as piss, like that says something. So I'm again, I'm not saying you've got to use the barbell. All I'm saying is it says something. If you can max out the row machine, the pull down and the pullover, but you can't deadlift three plates or you can't deadlift four plates, or you can't deadlift five, right? So it says something. Now, next one. You've never booked. Now, most people I think need at least one serious book in their lives. Okay, one one serious book. Now I've I've said before, like recomposition is generally a good idea, but um, you need at least one serious book in your life for most people. And if you're already fat, maybe you don't. But if you've already had some failed books, maybe not. But you need to have one book. What most people tend to do is they'll bulk and they'll pair that with some really crappy progression, and then they'll say, "Yeah, bulking doesn't work for me." It's like, no, no, you didn't work for bulking. Like your progression was crap in the gym. You you made all those mistakes. You didn't strain. You didn't go for progression and you just screw you just hadn't you just made yourself an excuse for six months to eat a lot of food like that's not cool dude that's not going to get you any muscle next and this is the final one and probably the most important one you don't really believe in yourself you don't really believe in you don't really believe in the power of the barbell to change your body now this is me um as some of you guys might know i, I i'm i hit 40 this year this is me at three phases of my life this is me when i was a lot younger powerlifting this is me on the right when I was older in strongman competition. That's a stone there as I was getting ready to lift the stones. And in the middle there, that's me bodybuilding um, but only a few years ago. Now, I grew up as a pudgy kid. I was overweight. I had no athletic ability whatsoever. All of my school reports for PE said he tries hard. They never once said I was good. <laughs> they said he tries hard. I was not a physical specimen is what I'm trying to say. I didn't, but I did not believe myself. <laughs> I just gave it a try and it just went on from there. And sure, I believed in myself. Of course I did. You know, I had some confidence and I stuck to a plan and I had a good plan. I never had the best plan, but I had a plan and I had some confidence in myself. And look at all that. I can look back now at 40 going, I have a cupboard full of trophies. I have lifts that I've made. I have some, at least some wisdom that I try to impart to you guys. So. Yeah, the last one is you don't really believe in yourself. And I think that's a big one. So I'm going to end it there. And uh, I will speak to you guys next time. Hopefully that's given you something to think about. Let me know.